Hey everybody, Jeff Stone here with day 52 of the year 2015 at magicreview.com. We're looking at uh, the Ninja Tossed Out Deck System by Patrick Redford. So this is all going to come down to what is your definition of tossed out deck? Traditionally, you know, the original method was, or the original effect, deck of cards, rubber bands around it. You toss it out into the audience and somebody catches it. They take a peek at a card. Then they toss it to somebody else. That person takes a peek at a card. They toss it to somebody else. That person takes a peek at a card. And, and you know, you can do that, you know, two or three, maybe four at the most people. The last guy tosses the deck up to, back to you on stage. And you don't even have to touch the deck. They can toss the deck up to the stage and you just let it fall in front of you. And you don't have to touch it. Everybody that selected or peeked at a card stands up. And you name all the cards that they're thinking of. And they all sit down. That's the effect. Very hands-off effect. So that's what I think of when I think tossed out deck. Um, I mean, there's variables here and there, you know, the number of people and stuff. But the general thing is that the deck is tossed to, into the audience and they are, without you, you know, handling the cards, they're peeking at a card and then tossing it to another person. <clears throat> so that's what I think of as tossed out deck. I'm assuming your definition is similar to that. Well, um, when we look at the ad copy for this and, and everything, um, your definition of the tossed out deck is going to determine how accurate the ad copy is on this product. So, um, before we get into that though, let's just talk about, um, this general overall big picture of this product. Um, first of all, the DVD production is very good. Everything on it's taught extremely well. Um, and the methods and the techniques and everything taught are very clever, very smart, very deceptive. The only real question is, is are you really getting a tossed out deck system? And even if the answer is no, that doesn't mean this is a bad product. That just means you need to know what you're getting before you buy it. So, so whatever the product is, whatever it is you're learning, I'm telling you it's well done. It's just going to be a matter of it does it fit your particular needs. So that's when we get into the ad copy, this will kind of make some more sense. Okay. So first of all, uh, the ad copy says on the back of the DVD and on the websites, if you want to tell people what cards they're thinking of under the most strict looking conditions, you need the Ninja tossed out deck system. I would say that's an accurate statement. <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry guys, you've been putting out my cough for like, I don't even know now. It's been weeks. It's all I can do to make it through these videos without um, coughing on you. Anyway, so I would say that's an, an accurate statement. Um, I mean, you need to toss out? No, okay, but but does the system do that? Yes. If you want to tell people what cards they're thinking under the most strict test, strict looking conditions, that's true. It's very true, in particular, if you saw the ad video trailer where he does the effect for one person that effect seems impossible and it is that clean okay when you start adding in multiple people doing a multiple selections routine that's where the gray area comes in so let's take the next step <clears throat> the tossed out deck system involves no breathers no short cards no long cards no marked decks no deck switches all that is 100 percent true no alterations to the cards of any kind that's also true in other words you're not marking up the cards or gimmicking the cards or whatever it's just normal cards no memory work i i'll say that's 98.99 percent true i'll explain that in a moment the next two no fishing and no stack necessary okay now it's getting a little fuzzy um and not a warm fuzzy like the good kind um so in order to do the effect that I think of as tossed out deck, which is given a, a, let's even leave the tossing part out because you can't really toss this deck, but we'll call it handout deck, all right? Handing the deck out to multiple people in the audience. So in this effect, in this ninja tossed out deck system, if you want to be able to give the deck out to somebody, have them peek at a card, have them give it to somebody else, 
have them peek at a card, have them give it to somebody else, have them peek at a card, and then they give the cards back to you. If you want to do that effect, you have to use a stack using this ninja tossed out deck method. You have to use a stack. So when it says no stack necessary, that's true if you're doing it with one person, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, not true if you're doing it with multiple people which that's what tossed out deck is. Typically, it's multiple people. So that's why I say that that no stack necessary is a bit fuzzy, okay? Um, if you want to do the true effect of having three or whatever, two, three, four people in the audience have the deck peek at it and then give the deck back to, you know, to tossing it around the audience and then giving it back to you, you need the stack, okay? What stack you use doesn't even matter, which is why I said that the memory work is a little bit fishy where it says no memory work. Well, if you use a stack like say Aronson or uh, the, the Mnemonica by Tom Rez or something like that, um, then there is memory work obviously in that. Now, of course, if you already know that stack, you've already got the memory work sort of down and done. But if you use, you know, an Eight Kings or a Stebbins or something like that, then there's still a teeny bit of thinking slash memory work involved. Um, that's why I say it's 98.99% true. Uh, so we'll we'll call it if you're going to use say size Stebbins, let's say we'll call it no memory work. I think that's reasonably fair. Okay. So, um, but back to the stack situation. If your definition of tossed out deck is having three ish people peek at a card and ta ta pass it to the next person, you cannot do that without a stack. If you're going to use the ninja system, all right. So, not only that. But with the ninja system, the deck is loose. It's not rubber banded. Um, and you give it to them in the box. They take it out of the box. They can cut the deck as many times as they want. They peek at a card, the, the top card, and they lock it in their mind. And then they hand the deck to somebody else. Now, they need to hand that deck to somebody else in a very specific manner. Uh, it's a manner that you could probably relatively easily control. Um, but it's still a specific manner that if they don't do it, you have to handle the cards. Well, in a traditional tossed out deck, you never handle the cards. So there's a trade off there. So let's assume though, however, that the person hands the cards off to the next person the way that they're supposed to, and you get the information you need. And, and it is, you do show them how to do it. And it's not something that's like so awkward that they're like, why are you telling me to hand the cards that way? It's nothing like that. It's a pretty natural thing for them to do, but it's still, there's a chance that they won't do it the exact right way. So, but let's assume they do it the right way. So person number one gets the deck, takes them out of the box, uh, cuts, 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 looks at the top card, hands the deck off to another person and he does it properly. That person cuts, 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 takes a peek at the top card, hands it off to another person. Third person, cut, cut, cut takes a peek at the top card, and then buries it in the middle of the deck, and then uh, the cards are put back in the box, and they can put the cards back in the box. Again, you have to coach them a little bit on how they put the cards back in the box, but nothing major. They close up the box, they hand you the deck, you do a secret move that takes, it's invisible, nobody will see it, it's a very, very clever thing, concept, and it takes a second, literally one second or less to do it. Once you've done that, you have everything you need to know and you can reveal all three cards. So that requires a stack. You have to have a stack to do that effect. So when it says no stack necessary, if you're talking about doing a tossed out deck routine, that is an untrue statement. The stack is necessary. Now, that's relatively hands off if they hand the cards to the other person the proper way. You have to touch the deck while it's in the box for just a split second to get one piece of information for you to do the whole entire routine. However, if the person does not hand the cards to their person properly, you can't exactly correct them because then it becomes way too fishy. And so what you have to do is you have to take the cards and um, handle the cards or the person that they hand the cards to, you tell them, okay, I don't want you to pick a card. I want you to hand them to somebody else and then you hope that person hands them off the correct way. Um, but if you can't get them to hand it off the correct way, you're going to have to handle the cards for a moment. And so 
the 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 nice thing about the original tossed out deck is you don't handle the cards at all. I mean, the moment you toss a deck out to the audience, you're done touching the cards forever. You'll never have to touch those cards again. In this routine, at the very least, you're going to have to touch them after the final person. But in the worst case scenario, you're going to have to handle the cards in between each person that's peeking the card. I'll let you decide if that's good or bad. That's just different from the original. But it still qualifies as a tossed out deck, except for the actual tossing part. It's more like a handout deck. Okay. So, putting that aside, that's what you're going to get when it comes to doing what uh, I think is tossed out deck and what most of you probably think is tossed out deck. But what about the one-on-one stuff? Okay, using the stack technique, um, the, what you saw in the ad trailer was very accurate. It's using the stack, and it's just one guy. He looks at a card. He buries it in the deck. He puts the deck back in the box box his hands off and Patrick Redford did that secret one second move I told you about he did it in that video and I guarantee you you didn't see it you have no I mean it's it's invisible but that one little secret move gave him everything he needed to know to know what um, uh, I think the guy's name was Keith what his card was so now that if you want to do that effect with just one person is the stack required well, yeah, if you want to do the effect you saw on that ad trailer. Now, there's another version that's very similar looking. Doesn't The cards do not go back in the box, but it can be done with a shuffled deck that's not stacked. And you have them, the spectator take the cards, they peek, they, so they're holding the deck, they cut it anywhere they want, take a peek, and they put it back. And then you take the deck from them, and you're able to tell them what card they're thinking of. Um, now, that there's no stack required for that. There is um, some boldness and some a little bit of luck. And if things don't work out just right, you got to go fishing. Okay? So the statement that there's no fishing, that's true on the tossed out deck when you have the multiple people involved and you're using the stack. So if you're using the stack for any of these routines, there's no fishing. If you're not using the stack, there's a chance that you'll have to go fishing. That's why I say this ad copy is a bit fuzzy for me. Um, on top of that, in the ad trailer, it's in the video, uh, it says that this can be done with a borrowed deck. Well, the tossed out deck cannot uh, because the deck has to be stacked. So the way they kind of got around that was by in the video saying, well, you borrow a brand new deck from somebody. A brand new deck and then they take that brand new deck and using the Ortiz technique you know uh, if, you, if you're familiar with it it's just a couple Pharaoh shuffles basically and a little more to it than that but basically a couple Pharaohs and you're now in Stebbins order uh, so if you borrow a brand new deck do the quick work which I think is reasonable to do if you know how to do it and you can Pharaoh I think it's reasonable to be able to do that in front of somebody right then and there um, and then go right into the tossed out deck thing. Um, but the problem is, how often is it when you borrow a deck that it's brand new, not been opened, right? Probably never. So that to me makes it a bit fuzzy again. Secondly, um, their ad trailer says that you can have the spectator shuffle the deck. Okay, if you know anything about stack work, you know that you can let them overhand shuffle and you still have really good odds of it, the stack being intact enough that you can do what you need to do. But there's that risk that it won't be. And when he explained it to us on the DVD, it happened that it didn't, that he f had a spot where it didn't hit. And so it wouldn't work. So saying that you can do shuffle, it says having that you can have the audience shuffle. So imagine this, you got it set in whatever stack you're using. You hand it to guy number one, you tell him to shuffle overhand shuffle let's say you can control it and he does do an overhand shuffle he takes a peek at a card okay hopefully the stack wasn't ruined enough and him taking a peek at the card you're able to get the information you need assuming he passes the deck to the other person the proper way guy number two gets the deck he's told to overhand shuffle now you're up in the odds that your stack's going to get broken even more he takes a peek at the top card Assuming he passes the deck to the next person in the proper way, you get the information you need 
to now know what the second card is. The third guy takes a deck, shuffles it again. Again, assuming all these guys happen to do overhand shuffles. That third shuffle, there's even more of a chance that your stack's going to be broken. He peeks at the top card, buries it in the center. If any of those had a broken stack, you got a fail trick. It doesn't work. So, to me, that's a big risk letting the audience shuffle. If you have just the first guy shuffle it, maybe we're doing okay. Maybe. Uh, and, the, and don't let the other two guys shuffle it. So there's a problem there. Um, and again, I'm only bringing these things up not because I think there are problems with the effect itself, but because the ad copy is mentioning that these things are conditions you can perform this under. And I'm saying it's not quite that clear. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say finally, but I'm not 100% sure that it's finally. Um, it talks about having a, a completely shuffled deck and still being able to do the effect. The only time you can do that is if you do the one-on-one -on -one that I was telling you about where they take a look at the card and they put it back together and then you take the deck and are able to tell what card they're thinking of. The only other exception to that is if you borrow the deck and it's truly shuffled, there is a technique to get into Cy Stebbins from a fully legitimately shuffled deck but it and they teach it in the DVD and it's not their method. It was published in uh, one of Kaufman's books a while back. Um, but they teach it um, it's six culls, and I don't mean six cards. I mean six um, times you have to go through the deck and cull cards. And each of those six times you have to cull, you're culling about half the deck. Okay? So even the best cull master in the world, having to cull that many cards six times in a row, um, it's, I mean, it's clever, but it's, it's pretty... You can't just say, hey, let me borrow your deck. I'm going to do an effect here. And then go, oh, give me a minute, and let me spread through the deck six times. and I'd, Give me a break, guys. That's not realistic. So, it all comes down to this. If you think that tossed out deck is throwing a deck or handing a deck to the audience and letting three people peek at a card as they pass it to each other, that effect is possible with this system. Um, and it, But it does require a stack. But everything else on the ad copy, uh, you know, no fishing, no memory work, all that stuff, is all true if you're using the stack. Got it? Okay. Now, there are a couple of points that I've already mentioned about how the cards are handed between people that you have to worry about. The advantage that Patrick Redford is claiming is that when they're done, they can keep the deck. That's true. I just don't know if that's a, a plus or not. That's going to be up to you to decide. With the tossed out deck original, no, they can't keep the deck. But in this case, they could. So, if you want to do that effect, you can do it, but you cannot do it with a borrowed deck unless it's a new deck and you can quickly put it into Cy Stebbins using the Ortiz technique. Um, you cannot do it with a shuffle deck uh, unless you're willing to take the risk by having three different people or one or however many you feel comfortable with doing an overhand shuffle of your stack. Okay, It's got to be one that's already been stacked. And then there are the risks that I've already mentioned with that. So... I know it's a long rambly review, but it's so confusing if you don't, uh, you know. What I will say is this. If Tossed Out Deck never existed and this, this DVD came out and it just said, here are all these different techniques for doing these things, this would be, I mean, it's five stars. It totally, I mean, it's, it's excellent. Very clever stuff, very smart stuff. Basically, the, because of the fact that they called it Tossed Out Deck, it's lost some points there. Because of the fact that if you're going to do toss out deck using this method, you have to have a stack saying no stack necessary on the ad copy is a problem. Uh, and then in the case of doing no stack, you, you're not doing toss out deck. You're doing a one-on-one -on -one trick. And in that case, you might have to do some fishing. So saying no fishing is a problem. So hopefully I've made some sense here, guys. I, I, I'm just giving you all the information. you got to make up your own mind. I am telling you that this system is clever. It's smart, it's well thought out, and it seems impossible. Um, and if you want it to, to work the best way, what, I would, what you do, you have the decks, it's in whatever stack you're comfortable with, and you hand it out to three people, have them not shuffle it. I wouldn't risk that. Um, or at the most, only have one person shuffle it. But even then, like I said, when Patrick Redford was explaining it, um, he actually... Just did a quick overhand shuffle, and it broke the stack enough that he couldn't do the effect right there. And by the way, 
his method for, he says, well, if that happens, how do you get out of it? And he says, well, you just have to, um, um, I can't say it without tipping the method, but this is the situation. You've done, you have them shuffle, you get the information you need, but you got the wrong information because the stack broke, but you don't know it's the wrong information. So you put the card deck back in the box, or they put it in the box, and uh, now you're going to say your card that you're thinking of was X, and they're going to go, no. Now you're like, oh, crap, they, the shuffle broke the stack. So he has it, the only method that he had to get you out of it was to go back to the deck, pull it out of the box, and look somewhere else to get that piece of information that you need. That's ridiculous. That's just not a good way to do that. Um, but the way he worded it, it was almost like, well, if you realize that you've got the wrong information, then go ahead and check this other place to get the other information. The problem is the only time you would realize you got the wrong information, it's too late to check the other place without taking the deck out of the box. So it just was not a good solution for that. So anyway, I've rambled on long enough. This video is over 20 minutes now. I apologize, guys. I think I've given you everything you need to know to make the decision. If you want to do toss-out deck using this system, the deck's got to be stacked. You hand it out. First guy cuts, cuts, cuts. No shuffles. Peaks. Puts the card. Peaks the top card. Hands it to the next guy the proper way. And that repeats until the last guy takes it and puts it back in the box. Gives you the deck in the box. You do your one-second magic move. And you've got all the information you need. Okay? If you like that, get this. If you like what you saw in the trailer, that, that effect in the trailer... That is totally legitimate. And if you want it just for that one effect, it's 35 bucks. but that's a, I, I think you'd all agree that's a pretty fooling and impossible-seeming effect. So, enough said, guys. Final status was three stars. Stone status of gem. Um, the ad copy, I felt, was misleading, but I, did, I don't feel it was like an outright lie. Uh, I just feel that they, were, they carefully chose their words, and um, they're really... I think the big reason, had they not called this tossed out deck, uh, it would have been a much better rating in my opinion. But because they used that, then I think there are some guidelines that they should have been followed more closely and their ad copy should have reflected that better. But I don't think it was just an outright lie. So that's why I was a little lenient and gave it three stars and still a status of gem. That's it for this one, guys. Now it's time for you to like this video, subscribe to my channel, listen to the random iTunes song, The Moment, which is... Stairway to Heaven, but not um, Led Zeppelin, like I forgot who sang it. It's by Rodrigo y Gabriela, their Spanish guitarist duo. Many of you know I've probably got about 20 different versions of Stairway to Heaven. This is one of those very cool, beautiful Spanish guitar. Speed it up here. Come on. Here we go. Yes, very cool. Just beautiful. Anyway, I'll put a link to that in the description below. Thanks for watching this super long video. Tune in tomorrow on day 53, where I know I'm going to have very little time. So I'm doing one that I know will be very quick, which is Sharp This by Vanishing Ink. This is uh, draw a realistic line on someone's arm or shirt with a Sharpie and then make it vanish. A funny quick magic prank brought to you by David Bonfadini and Vanishing Inc. Learn how to use yours at uh, a website that I won't reveal. That's it for this, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Peace out.